Jay here. Before I introduce the video, I just want to say a thousand subscribers. Wow. Thank you guys so much for subscribing and watching all our videos. It's been crazy and this 2024 is going to be even crazier. All right, now on to the video. Today's video is about the Snow Shovel Invitational. People came from far and wide to play in a whole day of sludge gaming. It was at my gaming group's Decon, a convention rerun every year. Join me as I take you through my experience playing in this sludge event, the Snow Shovel Invitational, this time on JD in the Sump Sea. Over the course of the winter, the Duke of Bornemisa, who was the, the head of this small kingdom that had the one world tree, the, the remnant of the one world tree in it, Decide, looked at all the, well, the armies on his border, knew with his modest forces he was never going to be able to save every, everyone off. So, in an attempt to save his kingdom, he cut down the one world tree and sold the wood. And heavily taxed all of his peasants and sold the royal library and sold the royal orchestra's woodwinds and... Uh, Sold all the all the animals in the kingdom. Anything he could do to raise money. Went to the border with his emissaries and paid off all the armies that were at the border and said, "Look, my kingdom's ruined. There's absolutely no reason to invade us. Here's the money from it. Now fuck off." And everybody turned around and fucked off. So the 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 campaign this year is all of our armies were spent the winter camped on the on the the. Uh, the borders of Bornemisa and are now getting a sack of gold and these are the sacks full of coins and now our, our task is to take our treasure and to go back home. So inside each one of these sacks which everyone has there are 10 coins. That's the that's the treasure that we have. There's four games in the, in the campaign. Game one will be worth one coin, game two will be worth two coins, game three three and game four four. The player who ends the campaign with the most coins in their purse will be the winner. And the player who ends the campaign with the fewest coins in their purse will be the winner. Okay, that's the Gambit Award. So we've got two prizes today and not much to give out, but I've got a dice for the winner and a dice for the Gambit Award. Um, so everybody, uh, I, I just made a little painting on the outside of all the different bags of coins so that you can identify them. This is, these are my, this is a collection of coins that I put together over the years from traveling. So don't steal my coins. And don't add your own coins from your pocket in. These are all weird, exotic, old coins. So people are going to know if they see a dime or a quarter in there. Um, the first game of the day is going to be two multiplayer games. Since there's eight of us, there'll be two four-player games. And the reason for this is because I think it's important for a game that nobody's playing very much, that by having four players on a table, we'll be able to solidify exactly what the rules are that we're playing with today. Um, so we'll get started with that in just a minute. The other thing I wanted to say was there's no pre-measuring. Yep. For the weekend, both Mark and myself will be the arbiters of, of whether or not something goes. But generally, just be cool and try and work it out with your opponent. And if something doesn't work, make a roll for it. And because there are still, I think, a few disparities in the rules that don't quite match everything up. But that's to be expected because Sean's only ever publishes in the magazine. Grab a bag of coins. Uh, make sure there's ten in it. We had eight players and the armies they brought were tremendous. Very impressively built and painted, we had a good spread of factions also. This first army is Jed's and it's built from just the core rules. His whole army is 3D printed and there's no faction specific units at all. This is a beautiful Imperial army by Dylan. These are his Zouaves. The Artificer with a repeating rifle and Heavy Crawler. This is a Free People's Army by Ryan. These are the Knights of the Realm. He has an Icon and Long Bowman. This is a Cult Faction by Ben. The guys riding the Rams are Crusaders and the guy in the red cloak is a Priest of the Manticore. 
D's army is a royalist force which has a sorcerer, which is quite a conversion. He has a commander and then the rest of the army are royal marines. Peter's army is a cult army full of amazing conversions with cultist throngs, zealots, crusaders who are the big guys, and even a saint in the background. My army was my typical uh, imperial army with a crawler and a cannon. This table was built by Peter. It has white stone walls and quaint little cottages. It could be considered idyllic even. The next table was made by Dee and is basically a wasteland with some old ruins. I made this table and it's a small town square that has been ruined by war at the edge of possibly a larger town or village. Peter's swamp table with a river houses on stilts and wooden bridges. Another of Peter's tables, this one has ruins of old wooden houses and shacks along with rough fortifications all built in a muddy field. Mark's table has a large piece of the world tree sticking up from the center surrounded by gabions and some abandoned houses. The first game was a four-player game, 200 points each. Each player took a coin from their bag and placed it anywhere on the table, then rolled a d10 and placed that many gore touching it. Each player then picked a corner and deployed their army within 12 inches of it. The four players in my game were Mark with his Free People's Army, Ben with his cult's army, Jed with his unaligned army, and my imperial army. The other table had Peter's cult army, Dee's royalists, Dylan's imperials, and Ryan's free people's army. My game one didn't go very well. I needed to at least grab and control the objective close to my deployment zone, but I moved out too fast with my cavalry. They got to the middle of the board quickly and charged into some of Jed's infantry units. Ben then came crashing in on my right flank and over a few turns eliminated one of my line infantry units. My cavalry quickly got countercharged and killed by one of Jed's units. My Zwavs then got charged by Jed's cavalry, and I was basically out of it at that point. As Mark hammered Ben and Jed continued his advance, I came out of the game with a net loss of one coin. For game two, I was in a mirror match with another Imperial army. This time I had my cannon, and I was facing off against a heavy Imperial crawler. We deployed on opposite ends of the battlefield, 12 inches onto the board. The objective was to give two of your units a coin each. Those units had to take those coins all the way across the battlefield and escape off the opposite board edge. The coins could be dropped either voluntarily or if the unit was wiped out. The coin could then be picked up by a different unit. I gave my Zwavs a coin and my cavalry a coin. The strategy was that having two fast units with the coins would give me an advantage. It would have, except that he was able to deploy after me, and I put both my coin carrying units on the same flank, and he deployed his units opposite of mine. These guys are going to charge those guys. But this would prove bad because I didn't know how to respond since most of my army that could deal with his coin carrying line infantry units was on the opposite side of the board. At one point I did panic and charge my cavalry into his wavs, which was a bad idea because my cavalry died, dropped their coin, and then he grabbed it. In this mission I consistently rolled badly with my cannon, either missing the target completely or doing only superficial damage, and his heavy crawler was a star, and I really had no answers for it. He's gonna focus and fire. 
fire at the nearby infantry. He used it in the middle of the table as a fulcrum point where the rest of his army went behind it and to the opposite side, and it basically uh, dissuaded me from getting anywhere near his army. And uh, for a long, he's going to try and make it shoot. Oh, yeah. Make it shoot. Make it shoot. He does. Yes. Gains the stress. He does gain the stress. Saves. <laughs> yes. Six oh my god, nothing. So 10. So that's almost everybody. I moved my Zwabs away from his army and eventually they got off the board with one coin. They're going to use their short order to pick up the thing and they're going to keep going. <laughs> Sounds good. So uh, let's get away from here. His three units with coins then eventually made it off the table, and even though I tried to shoot them, it just wasn't enough. I lost this mission 3-1. Game 3 was the biggest game yet. We each had 350 points. I got to play my final match against Peter. This scenario was really cool. We each placed three coins aside from our bags, and then we were given seven markers. They were labeled 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 3 on one side. We had to place three of them number side down on the table, and only we knew which numbers were on which markers. The marker said a total three, so it could be three ones, or a one and a two and a zero, or a three and two zeros. At the end of the game, we revealed the markers and took that many coins from the pool of six coins. We deployed along the board edges, and I deployed in a block formation mostly behind some walls. My cannon was outside the walls to my right, my crawler was outside the walls on my left. We shook hands and started the game. 27. Yeah. At this guy. At that guy right there. That's 27 right there. Okay, let me put down a little marker. marker here. I started by firing my cannon, and that got him going. Even though I didn't do much damage, he was dead set on killing it. I should have deployed a line infantry unit on my far right flank outside of my cannon to support that flank. I put too much stock in that cannon being effective. The first turn we basically just moved forward, closing the gap and getting ready for future turns of bloodshed. He had the advantage in this game in that he had many more units, giving him more activations, which allowed him to react more effectively to my turn. By the end of turn one, he had made it behind the central building and I hadn't yet moved all of my units out from behind the walls that they started in. Alright, ready sir? Let's do it. One, five, go first. Turn two begins with Peter moving forward, his unit in the center moving right behind the wall giving him the drop on any of my units that he wants. I move cautiously forward with my main group. My cannon fires, and just like last game, does nothing. He reinforces his flank by moving more units forward. My Zwavs move up, and he moves his cultist throngs up to counter. This turn continues our cat and mouse game of moving units towards each other, preparing for the inevitable charges that turn three will bring.
His chaplain begins blessing units, and then he has one more trick up his sleeve. I have to activate my um, chaplain. And he's going to put the reroll on these guys first, just line of sight. Ten, that works. We'll put a reroll on these guys here. That's a six, that works. And he's going to put the reroll on these guys here. Good. Four, that works. And more than four inches from you. So that means four inches from you is going to place them right there. His assassins move on from my board edge, behind my cannon, ready to take it out in the next turn. Turn three. Initiative. I roll a three. Five. You got it. All right. I go first this turn and immediately move my Zwavs back and fire on his cultist throngs, killing one, but not dissuading them from charging my Zwavs. I lose one stand. One. So one guy dies and one guy takes a wound. His assassins then charge my cannon, but miraculously it survives and holds its, holds its ground. The toughness 7 is better than expected. He keeps the pressure up by moving forward his flanking unit to get in striking range of my cannon. I try to counter this move with a unit of line infantry, but they are unable to get good lines of sight to be able to use their firepower effectively. His big crusaders move forward, getting in position to charge the next turn. My crawler moves forward and fires at his crusaders. It doesn't do a whole lot. They take one wound. Okay. I'll try him at yeah. seven. Three. Okay. Um, actually, if they take a stress, they get better at combat, but I think I don't want that. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna re-roll that and use up that bonus, which is an eight, so they don't take a stress. Okay. He then charges into my Zwavs with the second unit, the unit he masterfully hid behind the wall. The charge was effective. At a door. So a lot of misses. And then uh, I make a But I did get five hits. Uh, none. So five are dead. Place five gore. Five gore. He continues to move units forward, getting ready for next turn charges. He then repositions some units in the backfield, and that's it for turn three. Next turn. We can go to turn four. I'll just turn die over here. Yeah. Turn four. I'm just going to go ahead and charge that infantry squad. Sure. So I'm going to focus with my monsters. Yep. Uh, Crusaders, sorry. His Crusaders charge my line infantry and do a number on them. There's 15 gore. As our combats in the center of the board get larger and more complex, the gore pile grows. One stand is left with two wounds. Oh, perfect. All right, so they're gonna they're gonna move in because they're definitely within range. Yeah, they are. So we're looking for threes here. Yes. None. I oh, lose five guys. There we go. That works still. My cannon backs off of the assassins, but they follow it up and get back into combat with it. 
He continues to move more units up from the back, but I finally remember that my crawler can charge. So I line it up for next turn. His flankers charge my cannon, but fail their charge check and have to back off. The gore pile increases and the combat continues, while he moves more cultist throngs into position for next turn. <laughs> Six. Nine. Peter goes first on turn five and his cultist throngs actually fail their charge. My crawler then charges headlong into his unit that is hiding behind the central building. I cost some gore, but only killed one. His shock troops charge my cannon again, and this time it works. My line infantry in the center can't hold and die in a burst of gore. My Arcanist takes a stress and dies also. My last line infantry unit then dies. So that's the game. Let's shake. Let's In front of the camera. Yes, exactly. Good game. Thank Great you. Game. Yeah. And so let's see what we won. I know what this is because I placed it. That's my two. Okay, what is this one? That's my zero. Zero. And this is my one, which right. you're gonna have. All right, so I'll have the one. This one is three, so you're gonna get three. I got three. That was one I was really trying to get. Zero. zero. Yeah. So I take. That one's also. You a take zero. one coin, and yep. I take the rest. Yep. yep. Historically, the first successful sludge daylong campaign, as far as I know. I mean, I'm on Sutter's uh, Discord site, and I see a lot of people talking about stuff. Don't hear a lot of people talking about an amazing event where we'll just three days we'll them out with our pictures. Yeah. Um, so, so I, I think that we definitely deserve the uh, the round of applause. Thank you to my co-host, Mark. We came up with, a, with an awesome uh, poster and went out there and beat on doors, and that's great. We got two prizes here, one for the player with the most coins in their purse at the end of the day. I can't win it because I was one of the tournament organizers. I had 13 coins from the time. You did? Nice. Dale, you win the Wise Owl award. Oh, no. <laughs> no, really? You also get a Metal King yes. Studio, and then also, just because I was going to give these to you anyways, some <laughs> of hey, look at that yeah. snob! Yeah. Yeah. Because you have way too much How infantry. How did I win? <laughs> too much infantry. Okay, it's a hammer. I fought yeah. a solid <laughs> infantry <laughs> marines list, and that was hard. Yeah, that was really hard. Now, who had the fewest number of points and is going to win the Gambit Award? I, I think it was Mark. I got seven. seven. <laughs> yeah. But because all I did was lose, I was holding steady as a six. 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 All right, Jay. What a great event. I had a great time. It seemed like everybody else did as well. It was a great meeting Dylan and Ryan, and I hope we can play more games together in the future. I want to thank Peter for coming all this way just to play more games, to run this event, to come up with the event, and to build all the terrain and organize the whole thing. I want to thank Mark for helping out as well. I hope that we can do this again in the future. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.